from Pierce Gift Armor X. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Shut your goddamn mouth. I'm trying to listen to Tom Likas. Bitch! And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you... Really care about it's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll free telephone number. You're gonna need it. It's 1 800 5800 Talk. 1 800 5800. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. With a story from the New York Times, as I have told you, the New York Times arrogantly has a slogan on the front of the newspaper. It says, all the news that's fit to print. Yes, they are the ones who decide what news is fit for you to read. And like so many other newspapers that have shown declining circulation over the years, amazingly, uh, newspapers like the New York Times have uh, turned to sources like the Tom Likas show for content. Because clearly what they thought was fit to print wasn't that fit to read. And apparently not fit to be interesting. So now they have, um, they've got a little bottom feeding there at the New York Times and now they write about the stuff we talk about. Amazingly, somebody at the New York Times thinks the kinds of topics we talk about are now fit to print. And as you hear this story from the New York Times, you will see it's exactly the kind of story we do talk about. For years, we never read stories out of the New York Times. Because we didn't think the New York Times uh, had stories that were fit to air. Because our audience uh, really doesn't care about politics or the war in Iraq or really anything serious. (laughs) But now the New York Times apparently has decided that uh, talking about presidential politics and the war in Iraq and military operations in Afghanistan, apparently that's not drawing in the ladies. So they have to use topics like the ones we talk about. And here, this from the New York Times. For Whitney Hess a 25-year-old software designer in Manhattan. The tension that ultimately ended her recent relationships was all right there. In the digits on her pay stub, the awkwardness started with nights out. She would want to try the latest downtown bistro. But her boyfriends, who worked in creative jobs that paid less than hers, preferred diners. They would say things like, wow, you're so sophisticated, she recalled. A first look at her apartment, a smartly appointed studio in a full-service building in the Tribeca section of Manhattan, would only reinforce the impression. She said, they wouldn't want me to see their apartments because they lived in cramped surroundings in distant quadrants of Brooklyn or the Bronx. You're dating guys in the Bronx? You should be having an HIV test, darling. <laughs> Seriously speaking. We all know the area code for the Bronx is 911. <laughs> well, it says one of the boyfriends finally just came out and say it. said it. He said, look, Ms. Hess recalled. It makes me really uncomfortable that you make more money than me. I'm going to put that out of the table and try to get over it. But he never got over it, she said. The sad thing is that I really like the guy, she said. If that hadn't been an issue with him, we'd probably still be dating. Says here, Ms. Hess's quandary is becoming more common for many young women. For the first time, women in their 20s who work full-time in several American cities, New York, Chicago, Boston, Minneapolis, 
are earning higher wages than men in the same age range, according to a recent analysis of 2005 census data by Andrew Beveridge, a sociology professor at Queens College in New York. Ooh, Queens College. That's where Ron Jeremy was once a professor. Great school. <laughs> For instance, it says here, the median income of women aged 21 to 30 in New York who are employed full-time was 17% higher than that of comparable men. Professor Beveridge said the gap is largely driven by a gulf in education. 53% of women employed full-time in their 20s were college graduates, compared with 38% of men. Women are also more likely to have graduate degrees. They have more of everything, Professor Beveridge said. That's from the New York Times. Now, I find this article interesting because I've talked about this many times. Uh, you know, I haven't always made as much money as I do. And there are times I've dated women who make more money than I do or have made the same money I have. And I must tell you, I am not the least... The, the, the women love saying men are intimidated by women who make more money than they do. And that's just not right. I'm not intimidated by it. Hell, I'd love to be with a woman who uh, who makes more money than I do. Who cracks out the, uh, the American Express black card every now and then and takes us away for the weekend. I would love that. Would love it. But the times that I have dated women who make more money than I do, and those times have been rare not because I feel threatened by it, but because there are just not a lot of women who make more money than I do. These women tend to be the way they are when they have high IQs. They can't stop from lording it over you and making an issue out of it. At some point, they will mention it. They will bring it up. They will talk about it. Now, I don't know how much money people make, and I couldn't care less. Women who make a lot less money than I do never tell me how much money they make. I've dated women, and I can't tell if they make $30,000 a year or fifty, or seventy-five, or even a hundred. I can't tell. Because women who make less than 100000 a year don't talk about how much they make. They, they have a job. That's all that's important. They have a job. They've got their little Jetta that they drive, or their Rabbit, or they've got their Mazda Miata. You know all those chick cars. They drive one of those. And um, I just don't want them uh, hitting me up for money, so I'm perfectly happy uh, that they've got jobs and they make money. I really don't want to know how much money they make, and I don't want to talk about it. The women who make a lot of money always bring it up. They talk about how much money they have, how much money they make. They talk about their jobs, and they lord it over you like, like, look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. Now, maybe guys are like that, too. I don't know. But the point is, the main reason I don't date women with high IQs and the main reason I don't date women who who make, uh, you know, in the vicinity of a seven-figure salary is because they just can't shut up. They can't shut up. about Women can't shut up about anything. But that's especially the kind of thing they can't shut up about. You date a woman who's a member of Mensa, she's going to mention it in the first hour you know her. And then she's going to ma re mention it regularly thereafter. Same thing with a woman who has uh, a job that makes a lot of money or she's a professional of some kind. You know, I'm a doctor. You know, I'm a doctor, right? You know, I'm a doctor. I'm, You know, I'm an architect. You know, and I was at the architectural firm today because I'm an architect. And, uh, you know, I make $150,000 a year, you know. And uh, even though that's good for an architect, I'd certainly like to be making a quarter million, but uh, I don't know how I'm going to get it up to that level. Blah, blah, blah. All I want you to do is take your panties off, sweetheart. I really don't care how you make a living. But these women can't shut up. And what's fascinating about it is that women now have interpreted that this attitude is that the men are intimidated by women who make a lot of money. I'm not intimidated by women who make a lot of money. If there's a woman out there who makes a lot of money, who just wants to get laid and will shut up about her job and shut up about how much money she makes, bring her on. If there's a woman out there who has an American Express black card, 
if you don't know what a black card is, you're not qualified for one. If you're a woman who has an American Express black card and you're willing to whip it out and take me away for the weekend, call me immediately. But there's not a lot of women like that. When women are smart, when women uh, make a lot of money, they can't shut up about it. They can't shut up about it. It's the not being able to shut up that I can't handle. It's the not being able to shut up that I can't handle. Am I wrong about this? 1-800-5800-TOM. Like this. Like this. 1-800-5800-866. I think you're the best debater I've ever, ever heard of. I'm a master debater. Yes, sir. And a cunning linguist. <laughs> and I'm an amateur gynecologist. This is the Tom Likey Show. <laughs> I want 800 500 Tom. This is Kim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Mr. Likas. How are you? Fantastic. Great. You know what? I love your show to death, and I agree with a lot of what you say most of the time, but if you could just stop dissing on the females so much, you bag on us. <laughs> uh, what did I say? Well, you know, just you always put down females big time. I didn't and put anybody down today at all. Oh, yeah, you did. How? I just heard you about a half an hour ago. What did I say? They want your money that, you know, and that we want your money. I did not say that half an hour ago. That's just wrong. Okay. Well, you did. Well, you're always saying. No, I did not say it half an hour ago. Okay. 23 minutes ago? No, I didn't say it on today's program. Okay. Really? Really. (laughs) Okay. 97.1? Yes. That is highly odd. Well, no, you're highly odd because I didn't say that today. <laughs> now, I've talked about women and money and gold diggers. I've talked about that on the air at times, but okay. I didn't discuss it today. That it's in your head, odd. dear. Okay. No. <laughs> well, just in general, could you stop kind of, could you be a little bit nicer to us females here? Uh, uh, dear, I I just tell the truth here. Okay. Okay. I mean, what I'm talking about this hour is true. Okay. Um, Do you disagree well, with what I've said? <laughs> Tom, who doesn't agree with you, for Christ's sake? Well, if you, if you disagree, just tell me. I just don't like how you dis, you know, disrespect the females. I mean, yes. No granted. group deserves respect. And people earn respect, individual okay. by individual. Okay. Thank you. So I'm not giving any group respect. Okay. Well, I've definitely earned mine, and God knows you've earned yours, and more power to you. I just wanted to call and just kind of try to make you lighten up on the females just a tad. Well, again, uh, all I'm doing here is telling the truth. If you can think of something I've said that's not true, I'm listening. (laughs) All right, Tom, take me out of the bong hit. But see, you can't. (laughs) Why? You tell me why you can't. Why? All right, we're going in circles. (laughs) Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Maria on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Oh, Great. man. I, that lady's out of her mind. <laughs> Thank I you. know. Right down on the women. It, you, it's, it goes both ways. Anyway, uh, the reason I called was because the women, the rich women you're, over, you're dating, they're trying to be over-validating of what they can do because they want you to be over-appreciative of what they've accomplished. And it's... That's what the whole... And I couldn't care less what they've accomplished because there's no benefit for me. Exactly. Exactly. But they don't understand that. I don't know for older women, but I'm in my mid-30s. So I was raised in the 1970s where we had this cross thing of, you know, women's lib versus the traditional roles. And rich women now making over 100000 ever. I can understand how somebody in my age range in the 40s, in their 30s or 40s, it would be a situation where, you know, they want the man in their, you know, the subservient place. And that's kind of what it would be, you know, I make this, I make this, I'm a doctor, I'm above you. That yeah, well, that's my point. I don't want to hear it. 
and they don't understand that. There's no benefit. It's not because I'm I, I I'm intimidated by it. I'm, why would I be intimidated? I'm I'm a multimillionaire. It's because uh, there's no benefit to me in what you feel you've achieved with your life or your career. I couldn't care less. Each person has made their own achievements in life, and there's no need to jam it down somebody else's throat. I mean, really, when I'm not doing this radio show, I'm not going around going, I'm a multimedia. I, I mean, I, I, I don't think it's relevant. I just want to see what's under your blouse. Exactly. It's that simple. Yeah. Thank you, dear. <laughs> she ran out of steam. <laughs> well, I, had, I had to perform. Uh, you know how that works, right? perform radio euthanasia there because uh, she was on life support. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Amanda on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Fantastic. I was just calling because you advertise all the time how much you make. What's the difference between what Here's the difference here. Uh, because I'm doing a radio show and it is usually a response to somebody calling up and calling me a loser. Now, okay. when I am on a date, I never bring up what I do for a living or how much money I make. And I might tell you uh, that uh, women who know who I am, who date me, they really don't like the show. They don't like what I do for a living. Uh, they think it's cool that I have a uh, a good job and I make a lot of money, but they they don't they don't particularly like what I do or what I say on the radio. So I I play it down. I don't talk about it. But you don't think the women that you date listen to your radio show? So they I don't know? care if they do. When they talk to me directly, not the Tom Likas show. They're talking to Tom Likas, me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't talk about this stuff. I don't talk about how much money I make. I, are you kidding me? So why, why do you think they bring it up? You don't bring it up either? No, I don't. When I bring it up on the air, it's because someone calls and says, you're a loser. You're a loser. And then I'm forced to respond with, well, I'll show you what kind of loser I am. Yeah, but money isn't defining whether you're a loser or not. Oh, I think, I think money's a very good way to determine whether someone's a loser. If someone doesn't have any money, they're generally a loser. But based on their personality, you're saying money makes the person or breaks the person? Their money, money is a representative. It is a um, it is the embodiment. Uh, it is a it is a measure of of success or failure. But their personality has nothing to do with no. whether they're a loser or not. No, uh, money represents whether you work hard, whether you're creative. So somebody can work hard but just can't get into. I said work hard and be creative, and that doesn't mean artistically creative. I mean creative in a variety of ways. Okay. okay. I, I people who don't have money are not creative. They are not generally intelligent. Or they just don't know how to get the doors open. That's because they're stupid. <laughs> people who don't have money are losers. Okay. I mean, well, you don't, I, do you don't agree with that? No, because it's not. You're basing it on a person having money or not as a winner or a loser. Yes. All right. Let me ask you a question, Amanda. How many guys with zero dollars have you dated? Mm, not zero dollars, but how many guys have I dated that I make more? Quite a bit. And how many how many guys have you dated who make next to nothing? Or they make minimum wage? How many? Two. Two. Why only two? Uh, why does it matter? It really doesn't. That's what I'm saying. Well, but they, it does matter because the people like that are losers, and that's why you've only dated two of them. No. That's and you're not, not dating either one of them now. Oh, actually, I am. You're I'm dating a guy right now who makes minimum wage? No, I'm I'm dating somebody that I make more. When I talk, I that's not what I was talking about. It. A loser is somebody, uh, for example, somebody without money is a loser. No. Yes. You can't, you can't base a personality on how much... I didn't say you have to be a millionaire, but somebody who makes minimum wage is a loser. They're either a college student or a loser. You just don't think they're happy with what they're doing? I don't care how happy they are. Uh, if, if you're happy without money, you're a loser. Says you. If you take... Yes, I do. That's what I believe. Okay. That is I what I believe, and that is how I feel. Okay. People without okay. money are not creative, not ambitious, and generally don't work very hard. What if their goals aren't as high as goals as you are? And they're, they're they don't have, I just said to you, they don't have to have goals as high as mine. 
but there's a wide chasm between having what I have and making seven fifty an hour. Yes, and you always publicly announce how much you make. Because people call up and call me a loser, remember? I remember you telling me. But the me loser is somebody who doesn't make a, a, a multi-million dollar salary or have multi-million dollar net worth. Well, why don't you help people open the doors then, Tom? Because it's not my job. What is this, junior achievement? That's not my job. Okay. Uh, this is a radio show. This is not a and social services that. agency. It's and a radio that. program. You don't think the women that you date listen to you and know how much money you I don't care if they listen to me. When they talk to me, they're not hearing about that. And I don't talk about it. Ever. But they, but they, but they bring it up, right? Is that what you're saying? No, they bring up how much they make. They bring up what they do for a living. They can't shut up about it. Then why don't you tell them to shut up about it? I do, or I just stop talking to them. I just, just stop seeing them. And by the way, I have stopped dating women who make lots of money, and I have stopped dating women with very high IQs because they can't shut up about those things. <laughs> okay, Tom, have a good day. You don't, you don't believe that, do you? No, not really. Why not? Because. So you think women with high IQs just shut their mouths about it and don't try lording it over you? Mm, I think women that have higher IQs, they're more book smart than street smart. And I understand what you're saying, how... That's what they do, dear. And I understand that. Go to a Mensa meeting sometime and see uh, see what that's like. Go to what? A Mensa meeting. What is that? Mensa is an organization of people with high IQs who feel the need to join a club and lord their high IQs over others. Mm. You see? And those, and those are the women you date? No, I said when I have dated women with high IQs, they don't shut up about it, so I stop dating them. So what kind of women do you date now, Tom? Uh, well, my, my preference, of course, is for young, hot bimbos. <laughs> that That's what I like. They They have nothing to say. They can they they just shut up if you ask them to shut up. <laughs> they have nothing to prove. The only thing they have to prove is when they unsnap the hook on their bra, that, and then they, then they've proved it. That's it. Oh. That's really all I care about. That by the way, that's all most guys care about. Yeah, and there are some women that only care about that as well. Great, that's fantastic. You just aren't looking in the right places, I guess. Dear, I didn't say I can't meet women. You're 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 getting this all wrong. No. I understand you're not meeting the ones that don't shut up about themselves. Dear, most of them don't shut up about themselves. That's the way they are. No. Yes. How many have you dated? How many women have you dated? None. Then you don't know. Okay. All right, Tom. I'm going to get going. I have to go to some grocery shop. I know, now. because you've run out of things to say. I understand. I understand it's difficult. Like being on Meet the Press. I know this is very taxing for your uh, feeble mind. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Monique on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing great. Great. I just wanted to make a comment on what you just said about people who don't make money are losers. Yeah. In general, I agree with you. However, what about, like, school teachers? They're admirable. They don't, but they don't make any money. Oh, are you kidding me? School teachers make fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. That's a decent salary. Is it decent? Yeah, it's decent. Uh, it's hard to live on that in L.A., but yeah. it is a decent salary, and it indicates that you have accomplished something. Okay, I just, my parents are teachers. They make a lot less than me, and it seems like you yeah, know, but they, they still just... don't make. They don't make thirty thousand a year or less. That's true. That's true. They make okay. about fifty, sixty thousand, right? Probably. You don't even know how much money your parents make? Well, no, because they don't support me. I just know I make a lot more than them. Yeah. And, but they're not uh, poor. The but they are not I'm... poor. No. Okay. You're that... right. I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, teachers are not losers. I know. I'm... No, you know, I told you who the losers are. You know who the losers are? I, I tell you. There's the guy who dresses up as a Subway sandwich. Right. <laughs> And like the like the lettuce leaf at the top is supposed to be like his hair, and then the lettuce leaf hanging off the top of the bun, and he's like waving you into the parking lot to go to Subway. Right. That guy's a loser. Okay. Okay. Anybody who's ever used the phrase "check it out" when they <laughs> hand you something to look at, loser. 
Okay. You see these people on Las Vegas Boulevard, you know, on the strip? Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. All right. The people who make under 50,000 are are losers. I would say poor people. Okay. Losers. Losers. Sorry, it has to be said. What's poor in L.A.? Well, I'll put it this way. It depends on how many people are in your family. Okay. Okay. If you've got 13 children and you make 50000 a year, you're a loser. <laughs> okay? If you've got no children you make 50000 a year, that's decent. It's respectable. If you've got one or two children, it's respectable. Okay. I hear you. Can you take me out the bong yet? By the way, other losers? Yeah. All right. You're arriving at a concert or a play. Let's say you're going to see Wicked at the Pantages Theater. Okay. Right. And there's a guy standing across the street in front of one of the parking lots. He's got an orange vest on. And he's got those two sticks like the, like the air traffic controllers. And they're guiding you into the $20 parking lot. And like waving the, the, the sticks to the right as so you'll pull into the parking lot. Probably L- more than he makes that night. Loser. <laughs> loser. All right, Tom, okay. have a good one. Most bouncers at clubs, losers. Yeah. Losers. You think so? Of course. Aren't those just part-time jobs? I don't care what they are. <laughs> Losers. Okay. All right? All righty. Just had to say it. Bong hit, please. Bong hit. Yes. There it is, Monique. Thank you, Tom. one 800 5800 tom like this. Like this. 1 800 He doesn't know you're leaving. He uh, thinks you're staying. Well, how can I stay with somebody when they sat there and they lied? Again? Why are you still with him now? Because I'm, I'm a girl. I'm stupid. Okay, I'll buy that. This is the Tom Likey Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likey Show. At one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. Well, we started out this hour talking about women who make more money than the guys they date and their inability to find guys to date. I'm going to get into this conversation about uh, money and uh, how much money it takes to uh, not be a loser. All related here at one 800 800 tom Jack on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how's it going? Great. All right, what, you, what you're talking about, guys are losers that don't make enough money. What do you mean by that? I, how is every guy... That's... What you talk about, Willis, huh? Because <laughs> let me tell you, Tom, I don't make a lot of money, but I do get more ass than the toilet seat. Yeah, but... But and how does that make me a loser? No, I mean you're good at uh, at pulling tail. That's fine, but uh, you're still a loser. No, I get what I want. Besides, forget chicks. Besides chicks, I still get what I want. Well, again, I don't think you get what you want. Do you own a house? Do you own a nice car? No. I drive a 1994 Toyota Camry. Um, there you go. That doesn't mean I'm a loser. That was a great car if you bought it in 1993. Who were you driving when you were 26? When when I was 26, I didn't drive a car. Were you a loser? Was I a loser? Yes. Uh, yes, I would say when I wasn't making money, I was a loser. You were, huh? Yeah. I would say if I was not making money, I was a loser. And there were years I was a loser, and I worked to get out of being a loser. Okay, well, let me tell you, even, even though I don't make enough money now, I will be making a lot of money soon, I know that. How do you know that? Because I, I, have, I have plans, Tom. I know what I'm going to do. Really? So what college have you graduated from? I'm going to college currently. You're 23. Yes. Yeah. So uh, why are you still in college at 23? Because I still have, I still have a few more years to go. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, why are you still going to college at 23? Well, look at look at those doctors. Don't they go to college till they're past? You're, you're not. Uh, what, what medical school are you in? I'm not going to medical school, but I'm just telling right. You you're going. What community college are you going to? Are you telling? I'm going to Glendale College. There we go. Community college, right? Right. So so the reason is because you partied or you knocked up your girlfriend or you sat around just baked all the time, right? Well, see. Right? I, I decided to go back to school, and that's why it's taking a little more time. But No, no, no. But what have you been doing the last five years? It's too late. What have you been doing the last five years? 
The last last two years I've been going to college, and before that I was out partying. Out partying. There we go. So you're a loser. No. Now, you're trying to turn it around. You're in a community college right now. You're still a loser. Maybe one day you'll get out of being a loser, but currently you're a loser. I don't think I'm a loser. I know you don't. Most losers think that. <laughs> A lot of people don't think I'm a that's loser. why they that's why they can tolerate being losers because really if they thought about it and were objective about it they, they'd have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning which you probably did for years I think you're a loser for thinking you were a loser back at 26 no I was a loser because if you're if you're thinking you're a loser then you're a loser now well again Jack uh, you know, this is all about you it has nothing to do with me and the fact that you sat around baking for five years and then you decided to go to college? <laughs> Still a loser. I don't think so. I know you I don't. That, 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 that's enough. My point has been proven. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Hey, you can tell the last guy, man, he's a jackass. You can tell why he's a loser. Listen to his voice. <laughs> hey. It's a long time listener, first time caller. There I we go. Had a, I had a uh, something quick I wanted to tell you. I was listening to your radio show, and uh, I just finished getting a relationship with a girl that was. She had a high IQ. I give her that, but she always talked about it. And she irritated the hell out of me. I mean, the sex was great, Tom. I give her that, but it wasn't worth it. You know what I'm saying? I understand. It just it just wasn't worth it. I mean, she talked so much because they like, never shut up. Right, and after sex, like, oh, now i got to talk to you. God uh, damn. No, I, I couldn't put up with that anymore. I just, I had to break it off. Ugh. Always telling me how to spell words. Forget it, man. <laughs> there's, 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 there's such things as dictionaries, right? <laughs> or spell check or whatever. Or, yeah, right. I don't need her, man. To right. To spell things. Forget about it. Right. But you're right on. You're so right on when you talk about how girls, you know what, if I have advice for girls out there, you know what? Keep all that, all those comments to yourself. Guys only want one thing. They don't want to hear your mouth. Right. Just that, shut up. That, that's what I say. Up. Shut up. Shut up, and that's it. Right. But thanks a lot, Tom. That's all I had to say. Thanks, dude. You have a great show. I've listened to. I listened to you for years. David, thank you for that. Samantha on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I have a couple comments about the things you're saying, but um, I don't necessarily feel that a guy is a loser just because he doesn't make enough money. I mean, I'm about 30 years old, and I got married when I was 19, and my husband was barely making maybe $20,000 a year at that time. Well, until you marry at that age, a loser. Why? I, I live, we've been married very happily for 11 years almost, and we have three beautiful daughters, and um, now he makes, you know, six-digit salary, and but that doesn't make no, that didn't make him a loser. Well, I think he was a loser back then. No, he wasn't, because he was striving to become a man or something to Well, I, I, I was striving, I was striving, I just, I just admitted that I had been a loser. I admitted that when I was 25 and making $160 a week, I was a loser. Well, but my husband, I mean, he tried to always provide for us no matter how he can. I've never had to work in my since I've been married. All I had to do is raise a family. So Well, it I mean, all worked out for you. That doesn't mean he wasn't that doesn't mean he wasn't a loser when you met him. Exactly. He was determined to take care but of But he family. was a loser so back then. He was a loser when you married him. No, he wasn't. He had a lot of great qualities, and he wanted to get somewhere in the world. But, you know, he started from scratch and worked his way up. Many people like me start as losers, and then we work our way up to not being losers. Uh-huh. Well, that's exactly well. At one point or another, you guys, yes, you are a loser when you're barely beginning. but doesn't Like matter. your husband was. Like your husband was. My husband was not a loser. <laughs> well, we're Far not. From that. We are not going to agree, darling. But I thank you for the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Good to speak with you. I wanted to ask sure you a question regarding your theory. Yes. Uh, if anyone who is low earning or no earning as far as an income goes, they are considered a loser according to you. Correct. I would say, when I talk about low, I'm talking about the low, low, low end. 
Okay, well, let's say you mentioned 25000 to the last caller. That was pretty much a loser, correct? Well, put it this way. Um, let's let's do some mathematics here. The minimum wage is what seven fifty now in California. Okay, I believe it's seven fifty. A forty hour week, seven fifty is uh, three what three hundred a week. Okay, is that what it is? I don't know. I don't have a calculator in front Let of me. Let me see. Well, that'd be twenty times fifteen. Yeah, it'd be three hundred. Three hundred a week, or about sixteen fifteen thousand six hundred dollars a year. Okay. Okay. If you make that. You're a loser. You're a loser. Okay. My question then is about the winners. You're saying by virtue of one being a loser, anyone who earns over 16000 they must be a winner, correct? I haven't talked about winners. I've only talked about losers. Okay. So then what you're really saying is that all those that, all the priests, all the nuns, all those that go on missions, all those... Well, you are asking, you're asking an atheist that question, so... Uh, uh, I'll, be, I'll break it off uh, from I'll atheists. shock the hell out of you and tell you the truth. I'm sorry? I will shock the hell out of you when I tell you how I truly feel. Okay, but what I'm saying is, to be consistent with your theory, anybody who earns less than, let's say, minimum wage, no matter what profession they practice or yes, I uh, they do during yes. the day, they are, by virtue of your economic theory, losers. I would, uh, I would say yes. Okay. I, I completely disagree with that. But I wanted to ask you then, can you move on to, then what is a winner? Well, I, I I really haven't defined a winner. I'm really I'm really talking about losers. And well, losers in with respect to what though? They are losers compared. I think to losers what? are what is, I think losers are one end of the spectrum. Okay. Winners are the other end of the spectrum, meaning six figures plus. And okay. then there's everybody else, which is most of everybody. Then let me ask you this: anybody, if, according to your theory, again, a hundred thousand plus is some degree of a winner, correct? I would say a winner. So every drug dealer, everybody who's committing corporate fraud is a winner. I would say that they are a winner, at least in that one sense. They have figured out how to make money. You see where that, where that theory is a little warped, though. Well, again, my theory was about losers, and you're pushing me to talk about winners. Well, be, but it's real. I don't, maybe I, maybe I, no, you don't. I, I no, you really don't. No, you really don't have to. That's, that's your rule that you're making. I don't, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. I mean, I'm really talking about losers, and I think we all agree on what losers are. Losers are people who are not motivated. Losers are people who don't have any success at anything. Losers uh -huh. are people who don't make any money. I agree. I, I, I mean, let's given that, let's say we agree on that on that premise. Then, by virtue of that, anybody who makes more, like a drug dealer, uh, they would be. A non -loser. I would say losers are such losers that even a drug dealer at least showed some ambition and some creativity. <laughs> okay. While I wouldn't advocate it, at least that person wouldn't settle for being a loser. I understand that, but you, you know you have to think that 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 sort of rationale le lends itself towards a kind of a warped theory because by virtue of what you just said. You won't advocate it, of course not, because it's illegal. So how much then? Uh, I wouldn't you know, stop me from advocating it if I. If that, by the way, that would not stop me from advocating it if I believed it. Well, I, I understand your point. I'm just, I'm just stating that those that are committing all of these uh, uh, crimes and atrocities that you yourself bitch about on occasion. You're really saying they're not losers, and you and you uh, determine no, because the the loser the loser is somebody who just decides, you know what, I give up. Okay, but you're you're creating that giving mentality by those that are making uh, under minimum wage, and then we go back to those. Given I didn't say under minimum wage. I didn't say under minimum you, wage. I didn't say people? under minimum wage. Minimum wage is the minimum. Okay, well, a priest doesn't make minimum wage. They make nothing. Actually, that's not true, though, because they have all their room and board paid for, all their expenses paid for, they travel, they have cars. Yeah, but you were talking dollars and cents, Tom. Let's be now, these are dollars and cents. Uh, you know, again, uh, if, you're all ex if all your expenses are paid, you are getting something. Now, do I think a priest is a loser as an atheist? You bet I do. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an atheist, and that's the way it is. I'm just telling the truth. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.